So, what we saw last class was a set of equations mostly by simple ones, simple ones right that are used to calculate the response time and throughput and so on. So, which of those do you remember? Do you need that for a test? Some four laws or four or five that we saw right. Okay. So, the first one is what? Utilization of a device or the system itself is So, u equals x s right. So, x is the <coughs> throughput of the device, s is the service time of the device right. This is basically our rho equals lambda by mu in just another form right. Then, then little sla right okay, okay sorry second one is not little sla okay is your um, force flow yeah. So, force flow is x i equals x into V i okay. then <coughs> next one that is a little slaw right. So, little slaw equates So, everything starts to, uh, right first thing you find out is x then you can slowly start building up right. <coughs> will be specific here right. So, you can put all the use if you want this is utilization and x is usually given in the case of an open loop system if the balance uh, the flow balance assumption is satisfied then x is equal to lambda right with a single uh, And then the next one is our general response time law, right? So that is right. So given that you know the number of visits to every device and the response time at each queue or each device, the overall response time for a particular job or process is just this one, right? And then in the case of this interactive system that we saw, the specialized case of a time sharing system. So, every job right you basically have a set of circulating jobs right. The reason for looking at this uh, interactive and general response time is in the olden days there was only batch jobs right. So, there was a batch job submitted it went through all the queues then it uh, left the system, but as soon as one batch job is finished system immediately loads another batch job as long as there is one ready in the queue right. So, always assume that there is always a set of batch jobs to be processed. So, that is your when there is no think time and the other option is when you had time sharing terminals where there is always this delay between the system giving you the response and you say submitting a new job right. Essentially it is treated as yet another job right that is being recirculated. So, in that case we have this uh, remember we derived this thing right x equals n by um, r by z we will go to the next page. There are n jobs and each jobs takes r times for completion, z times for thinking. Therefore, the throughput of the system is right. This is usually represented in terms of n if it is a closed queuing system, right. And therefore, your r is also determined by this. Okay. So, this is about all right. So, basically everything seems to start with x once you figure out the v i v is almost always given or in some subtle form it is there right. So, it is uh, so that is the basic start, but then we get in little more complex stuff as we go along okay. So, sometimes what uh, we would like to see we will mostly restrain ourselves to this time sharing system because that is generalized version right. In a other system in a non time sharing system your z goes to 0 that is all right. If it is a pure batch system then z is simply 0 there is no delay between one job. So, it could be also say a new job loading time or something in the olden days you have to get a new deck of cards put it into the system right. Now, maybe there is some time to set up this job from 
even in our computer center today we have cluster based computing right so there is a cluster that accepts jobs on a batch basis and then you submit it you wait for your turn whenever at some point in time they load it they run it you get you get back the results right so you have <coughs> that or you just have to right so there is a delay there before your job actually gets run in the system so in that case that simply goes to zero if it is purely batch based system okay so what we try to do is uh, occasionally you know, there is a hurry that you want to know just tell me the bounds right some upper bound lower bound for the throughput of a system or the for the response time for a system right given the set of your network um, of queues you just want to know what is the upper or lower bound something that you can figure out for both these things and uh, so we will start off with the simpler bound then we will revise this into a more complex bound later on right so let us try to get the simpler uh, <coughs> bottleneck analysis okay. So, we call this bottleneck analysis, but what you are actually trying to do is get bounds on R and N. No, R and N. Okay. So, we have a set of devices, right, and every job requires DI, that is a demand. Right, that is made on every device as it circulates through the system. That's the average demand. So we will find that there is always one device. It's the bottleneck device, right? Which let's say there is one device which has the highest value of DI across all the devices, and that's your so-called bottleneck device. And uh, the way you do system design is you find all the bottleneck devices and you find ways to essentially balance that or reduce the bottleneck by either making the uh, that device run faster or some other way, right? So that the loads are the demand is more or less balanced because you'll get the best throughput for a balanced system. So if it is an unbalanced system, let us see what happens. So let um, right device B, if I can erase this, yeah, good. Okay, device B, B there. What like device, right? So that is. There is this DB, which is also we call that D max from now on. I guess this is the so DB is the device of the highest demand. Of all the devices, is my notation okay there? <laughs> oh, B is okay. Sorry, yeah, I'll have to put my D there. Sorry, yeah. <coughs> Actually, I don't need the arc there. Yeah, D B is simply that. So B is my okay. So then the throughput bounds, right? Per bound is as follows. So the throughput will be at least these two. This is one bond. So this is a um, upper bond, lower bond, upper bond. Right. Okay. So, but sometimes you also want a lower bond that comes later. And for the response time, so why I state in terms of n is this is a closed queuing network. That's the assumption here. There are n jobs circulating in the system, right? So, for n jobs circulating in the system, what is the rate of completion? Right. Again, think of this as your multi programming system. Right. So, if you feed the OS with uh, 10 jobs, then on average, how many jobs <coughs> does the system finish? Right. So, that is the rate which you can actually replenish and add new jobs that is your throughput. And I do not do anything with that. Okay. And uh, the 
bounds for R of n in this case we have lower bounds n d max minus 7. Again for this two we will get better bounds later, right. these are the first uh, set of bound derivations. This is the average response time when there are n customers in the system, yeah. this is the average response time per job, everything is in terms of the number of customers or jobs right, x of n is the number of jobs completed per unit time, r of n is the response time per job, because you have a job right, your CPU uh, your process that runs on the CPU on the disk and all that finally it finishes right, so when does it finally finish. So, proof ok. So, how do we prove the first part that the throughput is uh, bounded by 1 over d max or one of the bounds for that. So, let us look at this uh, utilization for this bottleneck device right, so u b is the utilization for the device, I mean I am operating the system essentially with infinite uh, queues right, these are all there is no cap uh, capacity restriction in any of the queues, so what should be the maximum utilization of a device, right. can go up to 1 right, utilization cannot be more than 1 of any device right, Where with or with or infinite queues infinite queues will restrict your lambda, but in general utilization for a device is limited to 1 right. No this is the u, this is a u, does it look like mu, no this is u. So, utilization of bottleneck device is less than or equal to 1, so is all the device right, because what happens when your system is fully loaded right, which device will have utilization closest to 1 the bottleneck device others will be less loaded than that right, utilization for those will be less, so we will take this as our starting point. So, what is u b then some of the formula that we know right x into d b right x into d max, so x of n into d max that we did not write in our last expression right, when we wrote u equals um, x s there is also u equals or So, this we derived right from in the last class. So, utilization is can be expressed in terms of the overall system throughput and the demand on that particular device. So, this is equal to 1, therefore, this is one of your bonds. So, this will be achieved when n is uh, large right, when n is large utilization for this device will go closer towards 1, but for n is small it will be little bit uh, less than this ok, so let us see what that is, so this is our first proof step 1, questions on this, if you refer to your notes we have right u equals x t i, u i equals x t i. You have got some demand for some device, but it is very slow. The only one demand is there. Your uh, demand is more, but so we define demand there. as product of V i into S i, number of visits to the device to into the service time. The service time is very low, so that is fine. Even if it is only visiting it once, but the service time is very large, that is still your bottleneck, right? So the service time and your number of visits to the device dictates the demand. So, this is uh, we will say part A right of the proof, now let us do some other part of the proof ok. So, now uh, the system I am only allowing one job right, 
so let there be only one job in the system okay there is only one job in the system then what is the response time simply the time that it spends in each of the queues right and you visit the queues multiple times and therefore right if there is only one job in our mm1 system what is the service time simply 1 over mu right in this case i'll repeat visit this queue several times so this is simply sigma di that's all there is no queuing delay only response time only the service time right service time into the number of visits to each device this is again these are all averages but this is your right so r of 1 equals d this is your other we said r of 1 right r of n is uh, greater than or equal to max of d and something else so this is a lightly loaded system heavily loaded system we used for this derivation this is a lightly loaded system for this derivation r of 1 equals d so if i add more customers then certainly right r of n is going to be greater than or equal to r of 1 right so r of 1 uh, r of n will definitely be this therefore it is greater than or equal to okay more so now i can use my next expression r of n equals this is something we derive right r equals n by x minus z and because i know that x of n is bounded by 1 over d max we simply say upper bounded that is so under heavily loaded conditions your throughput is bounded by upper bounded by 1 over d max right so applying that you get this other bound r of n is greater than or equal to this so combining these two depending on whichever is larger right so therefore what do i say that is see. and we use the other result now f x of n equals n by r of n plus z right this is what we derived earlier and we know that the lower bound for that is d right so r of n lower bound is d right the least possible value is d <coughs> so n by so any value for of r of n will be always larger than d right so therefore this whole thing has to be bounded by So therefore, my bounds on so these are two bounds, right? This one over d max bound will I use this when the system is heavily loaded. The other bound, the system is lightly loaded, right? That's what we will have. So that's simply an over d plus e. so with this you can try to find out approximately so basically you want to operate the system right see so what is the need for for multi programming to begin with right if i have only one job in the system when one device is being used other devices are simply sitting empty right so you want to add more jobs to the system such that the cpu is not idle the some disk is always getting used and so on right you want to basically push all the systems to close to max utilization but you want to find this magical point here beyond which your system starts 
crashing right your throughput will increase up to some point and then beyond that point if you increase what is going to happen you start having queuing delays right. So you want to operate the system just below that notch or the point where your queuing delays do not start happening right. If there is queuing delay then what happens your then your system delay starts keeping on increasing then there is no point adding any more jobs to your multiprogramming system right. So that is uh, so let us if I plot this right n versus x of n okay. So then you have these uh, two bounds right so one bound this this is the linear with n right n by d base. So if it is um, so one of one will have one straight line like this which is your n by d plus f right. So that linearly increases so initially throughput will increase with n linearly but beyond a point it is going to stabilize right and that stability that stable point is So if I simply if I actually plot the real throughputs it will be something like this right we will keep increasing and then at some point it will start maxing out. Beyond a point I just cannot have any more jobs in the system because that device is saturated right one device is fully used it is simply going to queue up and throughput will not go any further right. So this is your classic knee point right this is approximately where queuing starts up until this point there will be no queuing in the system. So you try to find out what should, what is an act, right, appropriate number of uh, jobs I should be having in the system to avoid any queuing at all that is what this analysis is used for right. So how do you find this n star just equate these two guys and you will get your n star right. In that particular system there is a single queue let us say you are analyzing queuing is there you want to only achieve stability in terms of the number of. So we can take if and a value of n is below than this then do not do anything once it has reached this particular number number of oh no when we do our uh, see in the queuing network analysis project 3 that is coming up we usually, usually start with the number of jobs in the system when I mean we just say we start with n jobs right. Can, can we calculate like this up to but I do not I do not think this is going to be useful for your ideas for a general system or uh, I <laughs> initially a deletion uh, for the transient removal no, I do not I do not see the connection between the two. Okay, we will take that offline. Okay. Right. So this n star basically is where n star is then simply So that is how the throughput graph will look like as you increase the number of jobs circulating in the system. And this is not only CPU this could be any you know, manufacturing job system also where you have you know, multiple machines that you are making a new whatever, you know, component and that has to go through these multiple machines and each machine you have to spend certain amount of time right whether it is a lathe whether you are getting sawed or cut or welded and so on you keep going around and then you want to see right how do we keep my utilization of all the machines in this factory maximum so that they are not sitting idle. At the same time you do not want to have a huge build up of right components to be made sitting at each of those places so that is the basic idea right of this questions on this there is no questions mean is this simple enough I can go faster okay I try to go faster so this is n and this is r of n so what are the two r of n values. So R of n I only have um, lower bounds right okay. so first is so this goes from 1 to n right so under light loads ideally it should be d that is my or that should probably be a dotted line huh. okay hold it make this dotted so that is one lower bound and the other lower bound increases with n right so that is. Uh, <coughs> So this is n into d max minus z. So somewhere here, right? It's your z. So this will be something like this. Right. So the slope of this line is simply d max, and your y-intercept is minus z. 
So, now how will your response curve look like? It is very close to d and then it slowly starts increasing increasing at some point it simply starts and it has to be greater than that how much greater we do not know but definitely greater than that it could be much greater than this. So, this is your expected response time to the system and you want to operate close to d right why should I be sitting queuing in the queue when you know. so you want to again this n star is sort of the optimal operation region for a particular system. And then again if you want you can equate this and you get the same expression right. If I say that uh, you know d equals uh, say 60, d max equals 15, and um, yeah, z is say 20, all this is in seconds. Okay. Sir, yeah. Looking at these two graphs, uh, we are as far as throughput is concerned, we have a steady state throughput. Yeah, throughput will stabilize because you cannot have any more. Yeah. But if you look at the uh, response time, it's actually that will increase because that's queuing, right? Yeah. So when your when your queue starts building up, there is no benefit to you at all because the number of jobs completing is still going to be fixed. They just all the jobs are sitting in the queue. That's all. If you put right, if you put more than the number of these n star jobs, then your queues are all pretty much operating at close to their or even other queues may be less than hundred percent utilization, but your bottleneck queue will be hundred percent utilization. So that is fully utilized now. Others are just sitting around, right, doing nothing, or they may have fewer jobs. They're not; they may be even be idle or for a larger fraction of time. So, therefore, your response time means that you're right. You are now what happens if you have hundred jobs? You will be sitting in front of thirty-five jobs, right, by the time you get to that particular server. So, therefore, wait time increases in the queues. So, that's that's your queuing delay, right? And much later, if you have time, we'll actually look at how we can use this for analyzing our uh, TCP. TCP congestion control, the window based congestion control is basically the same system. I am having a packet that goes through a sequence of queues, goes to the receiver, I get back my acknowledgement, right. Acknowledgement comes back, my window moves forward, right, and that is essentially a closed uh, queuing network there. So, I want to find what should be the optimal value of n given the delay in the system, given propagation delays, and given well, we actually if we ignore packet drop, right, you can just uh, like what is it, what is the op optimal window size I should have that is where even TCP right will be using something similar to this. Okay. So, for now this system what is your n star? Yeah, because of yeah um, there is a bottleneck device known your n star customers are divided across the multiple queues, but they are all, all sitting at the bottleneck queue there will be other they will be sitting in other queues too. That is the idea of this that uh, all the time that uh, an n star uh, always so that you can have the fixed amount of queuing delay as well as the uh, constant input. Yeah, an example of a real life system. Yeah. If you are looking at this uh, machine or this batch uh, system, you approximately find out from analysis right what should be your n star, then you never have any more than any more jobs than that. So, you, you are initiating say let us say you are running a batch uh, computing center right. So, there are 100 jobs waiting. And uh, you have each job requires right all these devices and CPU and so on right. You can simply just put one job at a time. You are not going to get much through utilization of the devices right. You will get very low delay right for this particular job, but then other jobs would wait for such a long time right. Because just sitting out sitting outside the queues, the entire network waiting. So if you find out that I can actually feed in five jobs at a time, and I find that the response time is still very close to the D, then that is satisfactory. If I go to seven or eight then the queuing delay starts increasing response time starts increasing right. So, therefore, uh, th there is no benefit in keeping more than 5 jobs in the system. Uh, how is this helpful in analyzing the buffer size? In to go to that example this is the window size not the buffer size. <coughs> you want to operate your system at the appropriate window size right the number of packets I can have outstanding for example right that is my n. And uh, that is going to if I, if I inject too many packets in the network, I am going to end up with queuing delays, right. So, 
that that's where that's how it is trying to write that more or less n star will also be the 100% of the bottleneck yeah when you get n star you are hitting 1 by d yeah you are closer to the utilization of the bottleneck okay. because n star equals 1 over d max which means that that device is close to 1 so in this example what is n star Five jobs, six jobs, whatever it is. Okay, you can take that, and then that is your opt ideal. But remember, there is a lot of approximations here. We're assuming that service times are exponential, right? This is very kind of. It's only a trend analysis, right? You might find that sometimes the particular mix of jobs, there are very lot, lot of uh, jobs that require fewer visits to many of these devices, and therefore you might find that utilization utilization is actually is lower. So you may have to go back and well, I can feed two more jobs in the system, still does not really change the performance as such, right? So use that as some sort of ballpark figure and then work around that. So you could say 5, well fine I put 10 right and some queuing I am willing to live up with just because of the distribution of times right on average I might not be seeing that worse of performance right say 20 percent compared to the minimal is still ok I can live with that right. So, these are uh, design level decisions but this gives you just a guideline as to what how many number of jobs you should operate in the system at a given point in time that is what this tries to do. Okay, so, this is your chapter 33, this is your sort of operational loss. Okay. So, next chapter deals with actually right how do you handle uh, with, uh, with the specifics of, of trying to find out the, the various values, we will see what those are.